So if you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen the incredible underwater shots by our next guest. She's an award-winning photographer with one of her images winning editor's pick for National Geographic Travel Magazine and the Nat Geo Coffee Table Book in Life in Color. She also co-hosted on the Travel Channel's The Perfect Shot for the Turned On by Food Porn episode and nowadays is facing her fear of sharks by swimming with them with no cage. Today, she's going to share how she came to live this whole life of hers uncaged. Make sure to listen to the end when we share tips on how to uncage your own life. Camera slinger, fear facer, shark groupie. Ramona Robbins. Hi there. <laughs> I guess you can say I am a sharp groupie now. You really are. <laughs> now. <laughs> and I'm a groupie of yours. Oh no. So <laughs> by proxy, a sharp groupie myself. <laughs> so tell me about when you graduated high school, um, y- you didn't do the whole like normal, now I'm going to go to college thing. No. What happened? I was just a lost little girl that just wanted to have a good time. I hated school to be honest with you. <laughs> But how did you end up in Dest? Was it Destin or Seaside? Seaside. Oh, okay. Well, you were talking about the modeling yeah. and how that started. Um, I had a girlfriend um, that was a model. She still is, and um, she wanted me. She was like, "You should be a model." So she told me about this event at Seaside. It was a big go see, basically, and um, I went and did it. And very simple, like full bathing suit with ruffles and cut-off jeans. My hair was just basically in a bun, no makeup. And I got on and off that stage so fast. I just don't like to be in front of the camera. <laughs> and, um, and I winded up getting a call back from just about every agency there. And, and not just any agency, right? Yeah. It was Ford. Ford, Visage, Elite, to name the, the top ones that were there. And I winded up selecting Elite because my friend was with Elite and... Um, it was my first time like away from home and it was an opportunity to live in New York and yeah so I did it but I didn't like it it wasn't me so you did it for a while and you did yeah three weeks what did you do oh god that short (laughs) so you did what did you do runway um I did editorial I was actually in um teen (laughs) 17 magazine (laughs) as class president um and I did some shows but that's it that's so yeah. good. And then one day you're like, you know, this isn't for me. Yeah, I did. I woke up one day and was just like, I'm not comfortable being, I just don't like that kind of attention. Like just being, I like to be behind the scenes basically. So it wasn't I'm hanging out shy. with the mafia <laughs> we that did. made you uncomfortable. You're like, no, it's well, really the camera, not the mafia. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. It was definitely, um, we lived in a model's apartment with several girls from all over the world. And, um, our chaperone was pretty easygoing and pretty much let us do what we wanted, so she wasn't much of a chaperone. And we winded up hanging out with mafia. They would take us out, and we'd get VIP treatment and go to some awesome bars, clubs. That's crazy. Like, that's so outside what the normal person <laughs> experiences, which is why I wanted you to share that part of the story particularly. But really, your whole story is because... So many people, and we were talking about this in another episode, is they wake up, they their alarm goes off, they hit snooze, they do their thing. It's about the same thing every single day, and so what you but that's never the life that you've lived. No. And so it's to not. you, you're like, eh, what's the big deal? You know, I did this and then I did that because that's just you're in this habit. Of, that's your normal. But right. I'm so excited for people to see, have a peek inside your normal because I'm telling you, sister, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't other people's normal, okay? So it's, it's going to be um, a really neat behind the scenes. So you decided modeling's not for me, and then you went to college? Uh, I moved back home for a little bit. Um, yes, I did go to college later. It took me... I. I did my associate's degree here locally, and then because um, I just still wasn't ready, I just school just wasn't for me, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, but then eventually, I figured it out, and I moved to Louisville, and I went to college there, and I got my degree in biology. And um, yeah, and then you um, went 
from biology. Oh, you were going to get your PhD, but mm -hmm. I was on the fast track towards my PhD and, um, I was doing a lot of graduate level courses along with my regular studies. And, um, I loved it. I loved biology. I loved ecology and animal behavior and, um, uh, all that whole subject. Yeah. I love all that stuff too, because, um, I thought that's what being a marine biologist, did I ever tell you this? That's no. what I believe being a marine biologist was. That's what I should have been. I wish I would have. Well, no, I, wish I, I think you, I mean, look at where it's it kind got of you. like full circle from what, where I started and left and like where I'm at right now today, yeah. you yeah. know, but the animal behavior part, that's, that's really cool. And I'm so into that. So, but you had some hiccups in along the way, a lot of hiccups. I made a lot of bad choices, you know, very bad choices. And, um, I got involved in a relationship that was extremely unhealthy and long story short, without revealing too much information, um, I almost died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think at some point, like you have to hit rock bottom and from there you can only go up. Right. Mm -hmm. So I took a hiatus. Like after I graduated, I, um, decided to move to Taiwan and learn some Mandarin for a year. And then I would revisit going back and finishing like my PhD. Mm -hmm. And um, one year turned into three years because I just fell in love with the culture. And um, that's kind of when I started really traveling a lot because mm -hmm. it was so affordable to just yeah. buy a $200 round trip ticket to Bali or Thailand. <laughs> and um, and yeah, so, so I wound up staying there for three years. I worked for a magazine teaching English. That's everyday so English. Cool. Mm -hmm. And you said you made videos? We did. We made videos. We actually did broadcasting as well, like on the radio. So like, I guess we were kind of like celebrities in Taiwan. <laughs> like when we'd meet like little kids and stuff. Oh, that's My girlfriend so and I, cute. Yeah. So you learned Mandarin mm -hmm. and you picked up photography. Yes. And you discovered you're a good teacher. Uh, I wouldn't say I was a good no. teacher. <laughs> no? <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I really enjoyed my time in Taiwan and I didn't want to come back. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. the longer you stay away, the harder it is to come back. Cause it's hard to find your place like back in the States. And, uh, what do they call that reverse culture shock? I guess you, you come can back say to that. Your home country? <laughs> that right. Um, what I'm, can, can we rabbit trail for a minute? Sure. Cause like, what's one thing that was shocking for you when you came back from Taiwan? which everybody, that's an island. <laughs> yeah, it's a very small island. Um, yeah, for the size of Maine and Massachusetts combined. It's very tiny, but very densely populated. <laughs> yeah. So what was something that just sort of took you back when you got back from there? To be honest, I, mean, I didn't really like have much of a culture shock when I came back, just to be truthful, because I did come back on a yearly basis. I mean, I did mm. come back every year and I still kept in touch, you know, with some of my friends and my family and you know, but I did, I missed the busyness of it, mm -hmm. you know, and the conveniences, like being in Destin, it's, you know, in Fort Walton, like it's a small town and compared to, you know, I missed zipping around in my scooter and like, oh, oh, right. in the museums and there's just so much culture and the food, you know, like all those things. Oh yeah. yeah it's just very, that's the stuff that I really missed. Um, coming back. I would but, say so. Yeah. It's, it's also, we, when we came back from uh, Central America, the first thing that we noticed was, um, it was, well, it was December, it was December. So Christmas, like there wasn't an abundance of Christmas decorations and music and, uh, what's kind of seems to me a little bit like Christmas throw up everywhere. <laughs> and we came back, we flew in through the Atlanta airport and then to Pensacola and it was just like, whoa, high Christmas, because we were there and Christmas was being celebrated. They had the whole month off in Nicaragua and most of Costa Rica to celebrate Christmas, but it wasn't this throw up of these inflatable decorations lights. that move and lights and there wasn't this loud music. And so that was it kind of uh, shocking for us. But so you came back. Um, was it 2003? Yes. Um, my father had passed away from a heart attack. So, and being the only child, um, I, my mom wanting to stay in the area, I had to come back, unfortunately. So I did. And that was really scary for me because it was just like, what do I do now? You know, mm -hmm. like I've done this for so long and here I am. And I, and it's like, and I want to go back, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's when I met my husband 
now. And, and you bonded <laughs> over um, Mac. A MacBook, yeah. We, I had a little laptop. <laughs> we bonded over a Mac, an Apple. <laughs> That's so cute. Did you, how did you, where were you though? How did you meet? Um, I, we actually met at a restaurant. Uh, I had another friend here who coaxed me into going out and just, I, you know, he was worried about me and he was like, you need to get out of the house for a little bit. Let's just go to dinner. And I'm like, okay. So I went with him and then he was like, by the way, it's a, you know, it's a business meeting. And then my husband like kind of struts in like, Hey, what's up? And he was like, Hey, I've got this video of you. Oh. From like when we met when I was way younger, like when we were 18, on a boat. What? Yeah, it was kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Shane? You're creepy. <laughs> it's like, why would I put you have a video? But y'all started... Uh, so it was a new adventure together, mm-hmm. and he encouraged you with your photography, yes. which it blows my mind that you would not consider that like a business option because I know <laughs> how talented you are. Although that's hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Yeah. So everyone can say that, but he really um, gave you that little push. He really did. Um, he had seen some of my work and was like, "You could make a living doing this," and I'm just like, "I don't know. I just wasn't raised that way." You know, and I was like, and I just lacked the confidence, honestly. And, um, but I did listen to him and, you know, it's just being at the right place at the right time. And you meet someone that sees your work and then they show it to another person that's in the business and they're like, Hey, you know, let's hire this person. And then it just kind of starts and evolves from there. Like, you know, and that's what happened. (laughs) And now that's what both of you do. You're both full-time freelancers. Mm, Yes. Yes. Which is so, I mean, that is, um, I know the theme of our episode is life uncaged. Yes. There is nothing more uncaged than both being self-employed, you know, and y'all are out of debt, you're debt free. So that's yeah. like another way that you're uncaged, which is so incredible. Yeah. I feel very fortunate for that. I mean, like there was a time when we started doing this where I would stress out if I went, had a stand of time where I wasn't getting work, you know, but I'm at the point now where it's like, it's okay. I'm going to embrace this time that I have and work on creative projects on the side to keep the creative juices flowing. Cause it's like a muscle. Like you have to, oh, if you, yeah. you know, if you don't work out your, your creative muscles and I don't know, it just gets harder. Yeah. They yeah, atrophy so, just yeah. like regular muscles. Exactly. Exactly. So how did the sharks come into the whole picture? Because um, I still don't see the connection <laughs> between, yeah. And then I had this great business and then I decided to jump right, in the water right. with sharks. Well, no, I, my, my father was actually, a, he dove and I remember like he had uh, two sons from his previous marriage who were way older than me. And, um, they were, he was teaching them in our swimming pool how to dive. And I wanted to learn how to dive and he was old school and I guess overly protective and was just like, no, you don't need to learn how to dive. Like you're a girl, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a way, like after he passed and after I got settled back, back in the area, um, I decided to take some scuba lessons, you know, and this was a while ago, about 12 years ago. And I started scuba diving and I loved it. Um, but I have to admit I was terrified of sharks. Like I always loved like the finding the little macro things. Like I was Mm -hmm. like, I don't ever want to see a shark ever, ever, ever. And there were a couple instances, like we were in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix and we were diving this wall. And apparently like while I was like focusing on the wall and all the little guys, there was like a really big hammerhead about eight feet, just like right next to me the entire time. What? And Shane had seen it and he wanted to he wanted to tell me, but he was trying to like figure out in his mind, like, how do I tell her so she doesn't freak out? Cause that's right. how scared of them I was. And, um, so he kind of moved me over and got on the outside next to the shark. And then like, he tapped me. And then at that point I just saw the tail go away. <gasps> so, I mean, it could have gone in different, a different way. Like I could have actually, you know, quit at that point. Cause we actually did have a girlfriend that was diving and she stopped diving at that point. Like she's terrified to dive now. Mm. And all the locals there are just like so jealous. Cause it's just like, they live there at the, you know, most of their lives and they've never seen this great hammerhead that's oh, around. Yeah. And they're like, you are so lucky you got to see this hammerhead. But at the time, like I was still scared. <laughs> and, um, I don't know, I guess like what really inspired me to be, um, more courageous, I guess, is that I have a daughter, you know, I I don't, I want to be like this cool mom. I want her to look up to me. I want her to be brave. Yeah. 
Um, I want to inspire her, you know, and, um, and I also wanted to just get over it. I was tired of it. I was like, I love diving. You know, I have friends that do it and they still have all their limbs, you know, like why not? So I put myself in that situation and I was already doing underwater photography, you know, but it's just like after a while you want something different. You just need something different. You want to grow. And I was like, I want to start focusing on the bigger guys. And, um, so I, booked a trip to Socorro and that's about 250 miles south of Cabo yeah and just so I could do that so I could dive with sharks and be out in open water like and we did we there were schools of hammerheads oh and Galapagos gosh. sharks and and I was terrified that whole time I was literally the one running out of air first which is embarrassing. I mean, my camera because is you're awesome. excited. I, so you're yes, using I'm all your oxygen. It, I, you, literally, it's, a, it's in the head for sure. It's mm-hmm. a lot of anxiety. Um, also, my camera is kind of like a parachute down there. It's so big. And when you're fighting currents. Is it the currents, one we shot with? Yes. Yeah. And when you're, when you're fighting with currents and things like that, like it creates this extra drag. And so, yeah, I was always running out of air first. So that meant I had to come up and surface by myself, which is pretty scary. But after a while, you just get used to it. But dive 19 out of 20 we were at a cleaning station and there were all these little sharks that were about three feet and I'm like okay this is cool and I'm filming them and all of a sudden the little guys disappear and then I look right above my head and there's a 10 foot Galapagos like I actually have the shot where his her eye her eye is like looking down at me oh my gosh and she's just my bubbles cutting right through my bubbles and then I look around and it's like the little guys are all gone and I'm just around a lot of Galapagos sharks and I was just like I loved it and I you literally get addicted to it and I don't know if I'd, I'd like to do something good with my photography um I would like to advocate for them you yeah. know and that's a great way to start I think is kind of showing people you know the co- how the wonderful and I mean, how, how important they are and how beautiful they are like it's a magical experience and like I mean I, I got so addicted that like not even a month after getting home, I set up a shark dive trip for Jupiter, Florida. And that's pretty much the sharkiest place you can go in the States, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, <laughs> it's, all, it's all said and done and I'm hooked. <laughs> so when people are listening to this, I'm sure part of them are like, they can't believe your story. And then part of might be thinking, oh my gosh, she's crazy, <laughs> the sharks. But I remember you telling me, Mm-hmm. about fear, fear of motherhood, fear of just, and definitely sharks, mm-hmm. um, that it, it helps you, um, it helps you grow to be, to, to be uncaged, to be not separated from your fear. Oh, it feels so good. It's liberating. <laughs> like when you can get to that point, you know, and it, and it slowly builds your confidence up, everything else. Like it's, it's freeing. I don't yeah, you would never think, I'm going to face my fear because it's going to make me free. <laughs> well. So, but something you said, like tips for listeners, something you said was, um, you just got to do it. You just got to set your mind and do it. Yes. Fear is the mind killer. Yeah, that, that's your quote. I love that. Yeah. It almost numbs you, doesn't it? It, it does. And I think right now I need to practice what I'm preaching because right now it's like talking yeah it's okay (laughs) but here's the cool thing and and listeners will benefit from this too is when you have something you've already overcome Mm -hmm. which clearly is many many things you've already made so many decisions in your life that are other people would consider scary Mm -hmm. you have evidence to um make yourself brave in the next thing, right? Well, you never know. I mean, you never know until you try, until you push those boundaries. You just never know, you know, and and it's not for everyone. Like that lifestyle of being a freelancer and not knowing when your next paycheck is going to come in, like that isn't for everybody, you know, but it is possible. It's it's totally possible. Like, you know, we have Mm -hmm. a kid, we paid off our home, we paid off our car. And you're the exact right parents for her. (laughs) (laughs) P.S. <laughs> <laughs> She's so fun. She is great, and she is just such a bright spirit. And if she had nine to five parents, I don't think that'd be a good fit for She's her. She's definitely not going to be a nine to five. No, no. There's no way. I don't know. You just. You, she's just gonna. You have to be creative. I mm-hmm. mean, creativity is the foundation of everything we do in life, and um, and that applies to what you do for a living. Yeah. How you make your living. Like, yeah. be creative and find your happiness. 
You know? And I think when you, um, the other thing I was impressed by you is you set yourself up to explore that creativity by being debt free. And it's not just a goal that you talk about. A lot of people are like, oh, one day I'm going to be debt free. But th that might, if you work at it now, even though that might be some sacrifices, then uh, later you can set yourself up for more creative endeavors, like even just this podcast, yeah, you know? Yeah, like what you're doing with yeah. this, which is amazing. So if you're not <laughs> set up prepared financially, financial preparation isn't just about uh, tra tragedy, you know, it can be l an opportunity to do something really cool, but you are, will be caged in that nine to five if you, <sighs> if you're, you know, live in paycheck to paycheck. So. And where's the guarantee there when you work a nine to five job as opposed to being a freelancer? You know what I'm saying? Cause like you could get fired, your company could close down. You know, it's, I think like, I don't know, working for myself, it, it's, very gratifying. I mean, you have to work harder. I mean, I don't, I'm not really good at marketing myself. Like everything I do is pretty much word of mouth. I could be more aggressive about it, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm enjoying motherhood. I'm enjoying my daughter. Um, I'm, I'm getting this beautiful balance with both worlds right now. And I'm pretty happy. Yeah. You and know? you obviously are pushing the boundaries of, um, your, your work and your creative limits. So can you tell us about your next project? Maldives? Yeah. Oh, Lord. OK, yes. Oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I need a lot of practice. Um, I am going to be instructing an underwater photography workshop in the Maldives on a liveaboard called Carpendove, which is owned by Carpa Diem. And if you guys are interested and want to play with the sharks and the mantas and learn to take some shots, um, my husband and I will be teaching together. He's doing uh, the video side of it. Come, come join us in the Maldives. Yeah. May, I believe May 6th through the 19th. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. So awesome. It's so crazy. It's just like, that was our five-year plan and it's happening in like less than a year. So, I mean, it's you have good. to be ambitious and you have to keep working that's the thing when you're working for yourself like no one else is going to do anything for you like you just have to be dedicated yeah you know yeah let it drive you yes. absolutely yes so how can people stay in touch with all of your adventures sharks and otherwise on social media uh you can find me on instagram it's a super long name it's ramona robbins reynolds or on facebook ramona robbins photography um and i have my website ramona robbins.com and all the yeah, places. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're listening today and you wanted a question asked that I didn't ask you or that I didn't ask Ramona, then message me. I'll ask you. Okay. And then I'll send out a bonus episode via email. And if you're not subscribed to my emails, just go to MeredithForReal.com. And there's lots of ways to get uh, included on that. So this was so amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, did you a great for having job. me. Yeah. Thank High you five, so much. Girl. That's a wrap. <laughs>